Hello, this is Brendan, and in this episode, we're going to review the crypto software as it is now in uh, 20, well, it's the end of 2017, it's December, might as well say close to uh, the 2018. Let me see if I go into the help menu here and say about, there's about crypto. So on version 3.3.2, and I'm on Windows 10, so it's a Windows 10 a quick review of this software. So <clears throat> this was by request and as you probably know I do GIMP courses. I've used GIMP for I don't know a decade or more now and somebody wanted to know what I think of Krita. Well first of all it's probably as they suggested a superior digital painting software and there's a lot I can say about that but let me just start by saying I agree with that. Um, the brush selections are awesome. I'm not going to say GIMP is better just because, you know, I'm a GIMPer, I'm a GIMP enthusiast all the time. It's, um, you know, the right tool for the right job. I'm more comfortable with GIMP and I would like to make GIMP with its flexibility to operate a bit more like Krita. However, as we'll see, there might be some things, some places where that's impossible. So let's dive in. And uh, first of all, I installed it quickly and easily. It was like five minutes. Just download, install, everything's perfect. Uh, uh, one reason I stopped using Krita is because it's new. And I was using it a couple years ago. You can look at one of my older videos where I was drawing a, a dragon. And I really liked it. And I said that in the video. It feels so natural. And it's uh, it works really well with the tablet. It's a good software. But um, it was buggy when it first came out. And now I think it's... It seems to be more stable and well there's a lot of stuff so let, let's go look at it I'm just gonna go uh, make a new canvas and I found that the default was at 300 uh, PPI or DPI pixels per inch which is good and I already set up a 4,000 by 2,000 as I normally do and that's what I did last time and it saved my previous uh, settings so that's nice um, we're on an RGB channel does it have the CMYK or YCMK or however you say it, eh, RGB. I think RGB is okay. What do you have here? It's grayscale. Oh yeah, there's CMYK. You can do that. I'm gonna stick with RGB. It's default. I like RGB. And that's nice. You can choose that. GIMP does not have that. So you know that's what we're doing here. We're comparing. So there's my canvas. And I already started to play with the hotkeys a little bit, so I can zoom in, zoom out. I am left-handed and I use the um, the number pad on, on the keyboard to, to do a lot of stuff. So, and I have the undo key set here. Some things, um, well, here's one thing you can do is you can rotate the canvas. So um, I'm still fumbling a bit here. But let me start to, you know, I'll paint something here. I'm trying to get to a normal brush. I can't do anything. And I just want a black black color okay and I, I mean look the very first brush I select here it's like really cool everything is that's a nice calligraphy brush right there you could do um, if I go to write my name as I normally do that's well, not so good hard to you know, adjust here that's pretty cool right not getting it as I normally do that's, uh, hey, I might even use that you know, for my next signature. That's pretty cool. Um, undo key. I notice I can undo so many things, and then it runs out of memory. Uh, the undo memory, I'm going to check for settings. And so the first thing I wanted to do was to check, you know, hotkeys and stuff. So, and so far, so good. I could set up a lot of what I wanted, how I wanted it, which is not true in Photoshop. They don't allow you to use the number keys. And they seem to force you to use control a lot. And I really, really don't like that. I just, I don't have enough fingers. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't do that. And so here we are um, in the settings. And you can do something like type just UNDO is undo. And as you can see here, I set undo to the seven key. That's just what I do. And I want to put the, uh, now I'm going to try a new one here. I already set some other things. I want to put the uh, the brush to the plus key. So I always use my pinky to just smack that big 
that plus key. On, if you look on the number pad, the plus key and the enter key are, are very big. So it's nice to be able to just smack that and get your brush. Um, show brush editor. Okay, painting. Brush smoothing. Blah, blah, blah. How about just use the brush? Okay, tool shortcuts. That's probably where it is. I only typed in brush. Right, freehand brush tool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna set it to custom, and then uh, hit none, and I'll push the plus key, and that should be it. Okay. So let me go into a pointer tool, or now go into the pan tool here, and then I'll hit the plus key. Did it work? Yes, it worked. But it also let me do that again. When I hit it, it zooms in also. Because plus might also, I wonder if, if, if zoom is also on set to plus. And if we can, yeah, this might have been another problem I had with Krita is, uh, some default, ah, yes, I, I'm starting, my memory is coming back. <clears throat> some of the default keys could not be undone. If I recall correctly, because they have multiple settings, reset, zoom, control plus zero, and yeah, yeah. And something that really bothers me when you go into the forums, please don't ever do this, is when people say, well, you shouldn't do that anyway because, you know, plus is universal. Oh, God, get out of here. Personalization means personalization. Custom means custom. I don't want to hear what everybody else is doing. You Now, if I have to work together with you, we need a protocol where the way that you do things can work together with the way that I do things. That, that doesn't mean that my hotkeys have to work together with your hotkeys. It's... Is completely different. I should be able to do whatever I want. And well, that's one thing that apparently isn't the case here, but not too big of a deal. Um, you know, I, I can nitpick. Here's the draw circle tool. It automatically uses the brush uh, like that. And I'm assuming I've changed those settings. So uh, some of these brushes are very interesting. Uh, I'm still in the circle tool. Excuse me. Go to brush. Uh, this one, no matter how much you paint, it maintains that kind of design to it, right? It's, and a lot of the brushes do that, and some of them overlap. Um, that doesn't do anything. Is that? I don't know. What, it looks like a weird brush. Okay. And look, I mean, these brushes are amazing. They're really, so you could make hair with that or something. You could do, well, you could do a lot with that. Some people strictly use this type of brush for the entire painting and now I, I have very good memory here and can you see when I look when it overlaps see those boxes that come out until I let go and then it, it finishes it I know why it's doing that in um, I'm not sure if I can explain it but I think it's rendering certain uh, it, it, it's trying to pre-render the, the final outcome in a way that will be more realistic and that's obviously not an easy thing to do it's kind of a glitch so that could be annoying if you start if you want to paint around like here and see things you know yeah you see it changes when i let go when i when i let off the tablet so i don't really like that um it's uh, clearly a bug that needs to be worked out however it's not that big of a deal now let me see how many undos i can do and that's it see i want undo undo as much as I could and it ran out. So here in a sun. So I got up painting very quick. Uh, the settings are there. And if that memory problem is a big issue, I could just add new, always add new layers every like you know, so many brush strokes and delete things as needed. Not the biggest deal. The uh, the shape tool I found to be interesting. Everything works. So as far as drawing goes. It's good that the interface just seems a little buggy, is all. But it's stable. It hasn't crashed yet. Text tool. You see how this works. Uh, do I have to select size? Yeah. I remember that having problems with the text tool. Also, I had to, I was drawing a comic in Krita and I, I stopped and I moved it over to, is this? Okay. I had to move it over to GIMP to finish, and that's that's bad <laughs> because GIMP is famous for having bad text tool. Um, let's see what happens. This is create a demo. All right. So how do I manipulate that now? Can I can move it. I push an arrow key. Yeah, I just move that over here. 
and center it a bit. Does it have centering? And then, so if I select it again, can I, you no? Know, it's weird, you tap on it once and that's it. Yeah, I don't know how, how it works. I, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's not, well, it's not intuitive. Anyway, let me try to get back to a brush here, a normal size with a normal brush. Where was brush palette? This brush cannot paint on this layer, okay? And, well, what layer? Oh, that was the vector layer. Oh, okay, so the that text, the text layer made a vector layer. That's interesting. That's good news, though. That means you could probably do a lot of flexible stuff with it. Yeah, this seems pretty good. It's So it's easy to change the size right there. I like that. I, actually, I like that a lot. That's very good. And I wouldn't even have to worry about my GIMP settings for that because it's, it's convenient. So, yeah, for, I mean, in summary, for, for painting here, I'm very happy. Uh, let's draw an eye real quick. Let's just say we did something. Let me look at this. I don't know why I'm using this funny brush. But it's kind of interesting. You know what I mean. Then, that's good enough. I get a blue, blue eyes this time. Make that around here. Actually, oops. I just hit something. Oh yeah, this is another thing that's really cool. You can go just by uh, clicking the the button on the pen. You can change brushes very quickly like that. And I don't know. And uh, oh yeah, I can select the color here too. And it seems to be saving my previous colors, which is kind of nice. So I can switch to recent colors very easily. This is kind of what I want here. I want a pen like. I think I accidentally uh, yeah hit the opacity on that layer. Okay. I want it. Yeah, uh, just like that. It's the best I can do for now. And being able to rotate the canvas like this, that's when it used to crash when I was using it a couple years ago. But that is obviously very handy because the hardest part of drawing and painting is usually not being able to get your arm and, and your elbow and everything in a perfect position. Because your hand doesn't just draw in every position so easily. Um, I'm very much fumbling here. But this is good. This is just to show, you know, I don't use this software every day. And so you can see where is it easy for me and where, where am I fumbling around. A lot of it is very intuitive. So, I mean, I think it's good. I just don't know where a lot of things are. Like, where's the eraser right now? I'm looking for the eraser. I remember the brush mode. There was like a brush mode. So you could be burn color. Yeah, there it is, erase. So it's not like GIMP where you grab an eraser. Yeah, see that? No, it's, and it doesn't work. Where am I? Am I on a weird brush? So let me go back to the brush panel, try and get a normal looking brush. And that's on a normal mode, but you can go to erase mode. Right. Kind of like that. So there's a lot to be learned. I really wanted to have a normal kind of brush. That thing is not normal. Just a pen. There's airbrush. There's almost too many brushes, but I guess I think you can make favorites too. If I remember correctly, right. So there's something. And we go like this. The eye. Kind of like that. Yeah, oh, this is going to be just horrendous because <laughs> I'm fumbling around. Okay, so I'm just going to have to accept the fact that this is not going to be a beautiful image right now, but I'll go to, uh, can I check? So I was at the settings. I jumped right in here. I got the settings. Uh, you choose a lot of brushes. It's very easy to pick up, <clears throat> but
but obviously I would be spending, if I worked with it every day, maybe after a week or two, I'd be proficient in it. I'm not proficient right now. How about uh, the whole image? Can I, I like to uh, swap, rotate, rotate. I'm going to horizontal. Yeah, there it is. M mirror image horizontally. So I can see that my, um, my symmetry is bad. And it is, right? But that's, yeah, it's, I'm not saying the drawing is good. The software is good. The software is good. Obviously fumbling around a lot here. So that's it for this one. Uh, <laughs> sorry for this crazy looking eye. Um, put that back where it was. All of the options that you have in GIMP are here. You can play with the docs. You can move things around. Um, and I can move this one over here. Uh, so all of the settings and tabs and the tools. You have a path tool I was playing with earlier and the shape tool selection. I could go in here, make a selection, hit the delete key. That works just fine. And you have circle selection, uh, like lasso-like tool, you know, all, all the same stuff that you have in all the softwares. I think the really, so, you know, in summary here, the one real difference is the brushes. And it, it, it's even better than Photoshop. And there was a really good artist on uh, ArtStation who I started following. I, I don't remember his name at the time. But uh, even he is using Krita now, and somebody asked him you know, why. And he said, well, just look at these brushes. And that's basically all you need to say. So if you're into brushes a lot, if that's, you know, and, and that does become more important as you illustrate more and draw more. But uh, for beginners, uh, particularly, it, you shouldn't worry too much about the brushes. It's nice. And I know a lot of people like to dive into the brushes. Uh, but... The real advice that all pros give is to not worry too much about the brushes at first. That comes later. You can make a good illustration with simple brushes, and that's what you should do until you really, really get your light and shade and, and all the perspective and all these types of things. The form of things has to be perfect. And then the brushes are the final touch. It's texture. Right? It's the final touch. It's like the icing on the cake or the cherry on the top of the icing. And that's that. Okay, so that's it for this one. Sorry if I rambled on a bit. I'll try and trim the video up a bit. And uh, I, basically, in summary, it's a good software. I hope it doesn't crash as much as it used to. I, it used to crash for me when I was rotating the canvas now. So maybe I'll be using Krita more myself, too. It's really, really fun for painting, and the brush selections are awesome. All right, guys, have a good day. If you like this, please share it with like-minded friends. And if you didn't like it, don't. And remember, you can like and subscribe and all that stuff. And I have a newsletter now. Go to my website, bschu.net. And you see sign up form there. The newsletters are awesome, really good. You can see the last newsletter I made also on my website. You just click it, and it'll show you the previous one. But if you get it in a mail blast, it's even better because you get it earlier, and you'll know what's going on in the illustration scene and what I'm up to most recently. So that's it. Have a good day. See ya. Bye-bye.